Hello Stings! In this video we are going to be looking at the characteristics of quadratic functions and this is going to be a two-part video. In part one we're looking at our notes page here and you notice how it has a dotted line all the way around and what you're going to need to do is cut out around that dotted area so that you end up with a sheet that looks like this. And then what we're going to do is go ahead and cut along this line right here so that you now have two pieces. And we are only going to deal with this piece here with the large graph on the front. And this piece we'll deal with in the second video. So here we have our, um, our notes page. It already has the parent function for the quadratic function graphed and that is this um, standard form is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. The parent function is y equals x squared, also f of x equals x squared. So we could call this one f of x. Okay, and then we have an example here that we're going to graph, but we have a little bit of an error here that we need to fix. Instead of this saying x squared plus 4x equals, this should actually say plus 3. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that. And we will be looking at um, various parts of the graph. We're going to be looking for the vertex. Is that vertex a minimum or a maximum value for the graph? What is the domain of the function? What is the range of the function? What is the axis of symmetry, which is a line that will cut it in half? What are the zeros, which means where are the places where y equals zero? And what is our y-intercept? Of course, that's where the, line, uh, the graph will cross the y-axis. So looking at these items with the parent function, we see here the lowest point, or the minimum, is our vertex. So this right here, the point zero, zero, would be the vertex for the parent function. The domain, it can go left or right, all all along the x-axis, so the domain would be all real numbers. For the range for this one, it can't go below zero, so y is greater than zero would be its range. Its axis of symmetry is this vertical line here, and remember vertical lines have an equation of x equals, so the y-axis is actually the axis of symmetry for this one. They aren't always that way. In our example, it will not be that way. So we will um, show here, though, that the axis of symmetry is where x equals 0, which is the y-axis, and our zeros are where the graph itself crosses the x-axis, and here that would be x equals 0. It only has one zero or one solution, and our y-intercept is also zero because that's where it crosses the y-axis as well. So looking at our equation that is our example, we have f of x equals x squared plus 4x plus 3. So the first thing we want to do is graph this. So I've gone ahead and typed this into the calculator. If I can get that to show up for you. Okay, so there it is in the calculator, x squared plus 4x plus 3, and I'm going to graph it. And let me get a better angle on this graph here. So here's our graph, and we're going to go ahead and use the table function to fill in the table of values and to graph that function onto our sheet of paper. But as you can see, it's a parabola and its vertex is going to be over here. It's going to cross the x-axis twice, cross the y-axis over here. So let's go ahead and look at the table of values. And I want to show you in the table of values the situation right here. Here we have at x being negative 2, y is equal to 1. If I go to x equals negative 1, I have a y value of 0. And if I go to x equals negative 3, I also have a y value of 0. So we can see that the lowest value is going to be a negative 1. And then on either side of that negative 1, we have 0, 0, 3, 3, 8, 8. 
this will repeat, this will repeat. So this is going to be our axis of symmetry location is through the vertex. So let's go ahead and copy some values into the, into the table of values that we have here. And let's go ahead and start in the middle here. This is where I'm going to want to put the vertex. I'm going to put the negative 2, negative 1 right here. Then we have a negative 3, 0 and a negative 4, 3. And then I'm going to have a negative 1 gives me a 0, and 0 gives me a positive 3. So I'm going to go ahead and graph these five points and graph a few more if I can just to show you what's going to happen here. So let's go to graphing. So we have negative 2, 0. So we go to where x is negative 2, sorry, negative 2, negative 1. This point right here is our vertex. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. Negative 2, negative 1 is my vertex. And this is going to be a minimum value, and I'll show you that once we have this graph. So I could also go to negative 1. That's going to give me a 0. And then if I go to 0, I'm going to get up here at 3. Now 1 gave me, if you can, oops, if you can see this in the, uh, in the table, a 1 gives me an 8, and that's going to be as far as I can go on this graph. It only goes up to 10. So I'm going to go ahead and graph 1, 8 as another ordered pair just so that we can see how high up it's going to go. So here we have these four points already graphed. Let's get these on the other side. So negative 3, 0 is a point, and negative 4, positive 3 is a point. Notice that these two are equal distant away from the vertex. These two are equal distant away from the vertex. And up here, I also have another point on this side that's going to be equal distance. So I'm going to go ahead and graph that. That was a negative 5, 8. And I'm going to go ahead and make me a U kind of shape right here with these three points. And then just carry that curve right on up. Okay. Let me try that with the colored pencil, see if that comes in a little bit better. Trying to get this darker for you. So here we have our equation, um, our function, f of x equals x squared plus 4x plus 3. And this, we can see that the graph continues to move up, so the lowest point is our vertex. So we call that a minimum, or lowest point. For this, for this example, this is our lowest point. Our domain, again, is going to be all real numbers because I can go to the right as far as I want, to the left as far as I want. So we put that, <coughs> we put that symbol for all real numbers. Now for our range, we can go up forever, but as low as we can go is down here to where y is equal to negative 1. So our range is going to be greater than or equal to negative 1. <coughs> now I'm going to graph the axis of symmetry as a vertical line that splits the graph in half. And I'm going to do that here in red. And I'm going to dash that line. And this is my axis of symmetry for the new graph and it crosses through um, where x is negative 2. Right here it goes to, through the x-axis at negative 2, so my axis of symmetry is a vertical line through the point where x is negative 2. My zeros are what we call my solutions. Another word for these is solutions. And these are where the graph crosses the x-axis because when we cross the x-axis, the value of y, or the function, is 0. And it crosses here when um, x is negative 3 and 
when it is negative 1. So we can see here in the table, when y is 0, x is negative 3. When y is 0, x is negative 1. So we have a quadratic, which is a second degree polynomial, and with it being a second degree, we expect there to be two solutions, x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 1. Now where does the graph cross the y-axis? That is up here at positive 3, and we can see from the table when x is 0, y is 3. So our x-intercept is the point 0, 3, or just 3. So this is the first part of some of our characteristics that we get from a quadratic. We can tell whether it's a maximum or minimum because we can find its lowest point, and we call that the vertex. We can get domain and range based off of the graph. We can get the axis of symmetry, which is where it gets cut in half. We can find out where it crosses the x-axis, and those are our zeros, are also called solutions. We can also see where it crosses the y-axis and get that point as well. So our next video will be part two of characteristics of quadratic functions.